Okay, uh, the same graph you can download from, uh, you can see on the tutorial handouts in the Teams. All right, the same same graph. Or oh, later you can access to my PowerPoint slides. Huh? Okay, now, um, at the moment, when you look at the slides, right, or you look at, at the graph, you know that this one is the pH, uh, uh, potential versus pH graph. Okay, and there are some regions that you need to be careful. We already cover what is A, what is B line, right? So let's look at uh, how do we read the graph. Right? If you're given uh, one graph, uh, what are information that you you can get from there? Um, the first one is the area where where the active corrosion happen. Okay, where do you look at? Uh, for active corrosion field, right? The first one, uh, I, uh, I always start with the pH because pH tell you where the corrosion can happen, right? You know that from corrosion, you know that uh, the more acidic, the more corrosion it can happen. So I will look at the pH value first. I will identify where is my acidic region. Uh, then from there, I check my uh, potential then from there I get I know where is the active corrosion site okay so this is the first step I usually use so from here um, as you can see this is specific for uh, metals or for ion so from here you, I label this one as uh, the, the region that we're looking at so you know that the pH level uh, for metals uh, will be around 11, pH around 11. But this is for protection, uh, for protection, uh, metals protection. Normally the pH level we maintain uh, towards the alkaline side, right? And this is the region where you have the stable oxide, right? This is a region where you have a stable oxide. So we start with somewhere on the graph and then we look at what is the zone that you are particularly interested in. So in this in this example, this example, we highlight the 11 pH and let's see what happened to this region. Let's, see, let's, let's, let's just random pick one line uh, one pH value and then we from there we explain what will happen if we move to the left what happened move to the right what happened so at this moment we choose one value that normally you will see on a metal uh, pH level will be around 11 then what happened to the left hand side you see you will have uh, ion charges FeOH you see yeah. FeOH3, this one, FeOH3. Again, the OH3, it means ferret 3 or iron 3. It means you see the uh, orange color if you fall into this region. Uh, then this one may, might be a very small for you. Uh, this one is OH2, ferret 2, very, very small region that you see the uh, dark green color or green color. Okay, so if you fall into here, you will see uh, green color. If you fall into this region, OH3, you see uh, orange color or uh, the the corroded color on the steel. And this one will be H H F E O two. This one will be ferric oxide. And this one, yeah, on the far left will be more charges of the ion. And also, why the, okay, so this one, we talk about oxide, right? We talk about oxide. So you have along this line, right, along this line, you will find hydroxide, hydroxide, ferrous, and fer, uh, ferric and ferrous hydroxide. Um,
and you know that oxide is there to protect the corrosion. Okay. Okay. All right. So just just tell you uh, just from this this straight line or black line, I, I I just highlight with the red color so that you can see. So along this alkalite uh, region or this line, you can see that you have a different property as you uh, as you increase your potential or you drop your potential. There are different uh, elements along this line. Okay. okay. Next one. Um, we know that the corrosion on the metals, we have three factors we need to be carefully controlled. Uh, water, hydrogen, oxygen. Right? Water, oxygen, hydrogen. So one, one of it, we look at oxygen content. So the more oxygen just now, the more you supply more oxygen, means more corrosion will happen. And more corrosion happen, you have you will have a more acidic environment. If you didn't treat the water, okay, if you don't, don't didn't treat just pump in any normal water and then you let the corrosion happen, uh, you will the pH will drop to acidic uh, level. Okay. So because of the oxygen. Uh, sorry, because of the oxygen. And you know the acidic sometimes you don't need oxygen because of the hydrogen charge. Okay, because of the hydrogen charge. Okay, I label this one just to remind you that just now we have line A and B. So line A and B. So you you recall that your hydrogen can expand to two electron, uh, two uh, uh, electric charge, H positive and two electron. So this one, you know that uh, again corrosion. You have when you have water, you have hydrogen charge. Uh, you have you have hydrogen, you have oxygen. The corrosion will happen. So here, even you take out the oxygen in the water. Okay, you, you take out the oxygen in the water, but hydrogen charge will still be there. Okay, so corrosion will still continue to happen. All right, and. This one, that this this is the line that we are looking at. So those below this line, those process below this line, the hydrogen evolution uh, will happen at catholic half cell reaction. So this one, catholic half cell reaction. Uh, please go and read the appendix D. Right, uh, we will cover more more of this in the next uh, lecture. Our specific. Uh, we have one specific lecture to talk about the kinetic uh, of the corrosion, right? So later you will see the wording of catholic half cell reaction uh, there, right? So at the moment, uh, I just introduce you a new term called catholic half cell reaction, uh, where usually this reaction, uh, okay, what is this catholic half cell reaction? Later I will uh, brief you in detail, but not today, right? But um, those below this line, below this line A here, you will have a catholic half cell reaction. Okay. okay. And why catholic half cell reaction? Because below this line, this reaction will happen. Okay. Below this line, this reaction will happen. And when this when this reaction happens, you have positive charge and negative charge. Okay. So again, uh, this one more on the pitting corrosion. Just now we have one slide talk about pitting on the top of the region here. So when you have a pitting corrosion happen, normally the water level, the water pH level will be 6 to 10. It will be either a little bit acidic or a little bit alkalic. Okay. So as you can see on the top here, maybe on the 
on the screen you didn't see clearly on that uh, clearly but later when you download the powerpoint slides uh, you can zoom in to see the slides or even you can see on the uh, tutorial uh, handouts huh? so we are talking about this region so this region on the metals you have localized corrosion localized corrosion mean on that particular spot okay So as you move from here, the pH value increase. You know that the more acid you go, more corrosion happens. So what happens if you, you increase the pH value from 6 to 10? So as you can see here, there's arrow mentioned that the corrosion actually decreasing. The activity of uh, uh, pitting actually is uh, decreasing. Right? So just, just play around. What is your understanding about acidic of solution? What happened is that more more acid. What happened? More alkalic. What happened? Right. So how do it affect corrosion? This one another point. This pH value between six and uh, ten, which is a little bit lower for towards uh, acidic and a little bit higher towards alkalic, because you know that neutral is seven. So six to ten. This this one, what happened? It will um, you will have a protective oxide firm. All right. Some, sometime this one. This happened in between the uh, oxide firm uh, layer. So this process will happen lah. Just it just tell you that uh, within this one, the corrosion will still happen, but the normally when we look at this one we look at the 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 oxide film the on the surface what happened to that process okay so i will highlight another region here if you this one is more on the activity this one more on the voltage and pH value okay so I highlight the same pH 6 to 10 you will see that this region also change a little bit the line the boundaries all these are change if you change the voltage right so this one what happened if you have pH value between 6 and 10 you have an anodic dissolution Will be happen localized anodic dissolution this the process called localized anodic dissolution will happen all right and yeah and then you will you will have these uh, oxide flames um, reaction on this okay so at this moment you just uh, as absorb the new terms that i mentioned Right. Later, when we uh, construct the uh, voltage potential, uh, then uh, we will identify all this area. Okay. So at this moment, I review some of the new terms, maybe the oxide film. Oxide film. Uh, when it dissolve, what happened? Right. When when the anodic uh, site dissolve, what happened? The next one is this this area with this towards alkali uh, region. Uh, one new term for also for today, uh, caustic uh, corrosion. Later we'll go deep into this one also. All right. So if you towards this one, then. Uh, this uh, caustic corrosion will, will, will appear on the metals, right? Um, and then, yeah. So the more alkali you go, as you more alkali you go, it will, um, the oxide protective layer will dissolve, right? 
So the more alkali you go, the protective layer of oxide will, will dissolve. This is the, 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 the effect. Uh, what happens if you increase the alkali too much, the protective layer of oxide will, will dissolve and you lose the protection. Okay. Too acidic also not good. Uh, too alkalic also not good. Uh, okay. If your alkalic level too low, you become more acidic. More acidic means more corrosion happen. Uh, if you increase up to a level where you become too alkalic, means the pH level too high, uh, one of the drawback is your protective layer, the oxide layer on the surface will dissolve and uh, you will lose the protection. And another type of corrosion will take place uh, if you're too uh, alkaline. Uh, if you want to make the condition worse, you increase the temperature, then the activity will become more and more severe for corrosion. Okay, so high temperature will be another chapter. We look at how temperature affect corrosion. But at this moment, this is just uh, add-in information. At this moment, uh, just to highlight uh, what happens if you increase the temperature. At this moment, just a brief statement. But at this moment, uh, I want you to understand what happens if you reduce the pH, what happens if you increase the pH based on the uh, potential and pH diagram here. Yeah. Okay. Right? So are you able to explain what happens if you increase the pH level too high until it becomes too alkaline? Do you Can you explain the effect? All right. What happened if you if you increase the pH until alkaline? So these are all the points. Lah. Important point is this one. Okay. And because of this one no longer stable or already dissolved, then one uh, new corrosion name called caustic uh, corrosion will happen and you will cause cracking, all right? So caustic corrosion fall under category of SCC, stress corrosion, uh, stress, uh, stress, stress corrosion, right? Stress crack corrosion, or stress corrosion, it's under stress uh, category. Yeah, uh, sorry, stress corrosion cracking, uh, there's a name here, right? So SCC, under stress corrosion. So you try to link corrosion to alkaline, tie these uh, two uh, environment together. Uh, alkaline, what type of corrosion is expected? So if you're too alkaline, you are expecting uh, caustic uh, stress corrosion, right? And this stress, because it creates stress, so stress will do something on the metal, right? You learn material before. What happened to a stress? It can be compressed or it can be tension, right? So here in this case, when you have stress, the, gra the, the granular dimension will be pulled away from each other and it costs from a micro crack until to the crack line that you will see. But that one is too drastic case, huh? right? But you see cracking uh, on the surface. Okay, so these slides uh, you just explain what happened when you change the pH. What happened? All right. So I put these slides in the bigger slides. At least you have a, a bigger picture of what is potential pH diagram. And this one is for uh, ion in the water at uh, 210 degrees Celsius. So you'll see. Um, the region all right, for ion at this temperature. So it will be a bit different for uh, normal. This one is 25 degrees C, right? So just a quick comparison between two, right? 
they look almost the shape almost same is only the you see the potential value the potential value uh, the one that you can see here is minus 1.6 to 1.6 right uh, this one is a bit uh, clearer compared to the previous one how uh, this one at a high temperature the the voltage 1.6 to negative 1.6 uh, this one, 25 degree C, also same, but you see the line A, you see this, this line, if you project to the Y axis, is very near to um, 0 0.2 volt. Okay, if you extend this one to touch the Y axis, uh, you, you see 0, and then the next one is 0 0.8, so the half is 0 0.4, so 0.4 between 0 is 0.2. So it's about 0.2 for the intersection of line 1 at 25 degrees C. So what happened if you see this line for elevated temperature, 200, uh, 210 degrees C, you see line A, line A, project to the y-axis, you still it drop, it drop be, uh, it can be a little bit higher than 0.2, a little bit only, line, right? but there's some changes of uh, the line position. Okay, so let's study one area. Okay. Uh, so this is just an illustration. So along this line, actually, you have a, a few phrases of material depend on the potential value. So if under here, you see firm here, Right at this, at 210, uh, maybe here is about uh, 11, uh, pH about 11. You see, you're having a uh, oxide, ferric oxide over here. Okay, and so on. Okay. So another one is on the uh, hydronic heating of building. Just now it's about boiler. Now we look at another example. Uh, for the elevated temperature. So another example is uh, hydronic heating of building. Or if you, every day if in your house, you have a water heater to for your shower, uh, you will have the same uh, example. Because uh, in the heater that you use, uh, you use uh, alloy pipe and sometimes they use copper pipe for the heat transfer and uh, you enjoy the hot shower. Okay, so this one also same. But this one more on the buildings, All right? So this is the illustrated uh, uh, heating system, of course. But this is a simplified one, just to bring you an idea. What is a hydronic or hot water heating? It means in a house. Um, in Malaysia, normally you see this case in uh, because Malaysia is too warm, right? So you don't see this system uh, frequently on Malaysia unless uh, you go up to Cameron, you go, that, go up to those uh, high elevated um, uh, places like Cameron Highland, or you go to uh, Genting, that very cold outside. So you need a heating system inside, right? But for normal uh, us, right? Uh, in Malaysia, we feel very warm every day, right? Uh, Sometimes we only need uh, a hot shower, so we just use the heater, just a, a heater um, to for the shower only, right? Uh, and you don't need the hot air or uh, for the building. So if you if you if you uh, travel to overseas before during winter, then you have all these uh, uh, hot hot gases or heater mounted on the wall to keep you warm. Okay, so how all this heater become heat and generate uh, hot air to contain the temperature inside the room is through all this pipe. Okay, all this pipe and this pipe are connected with water. So there's uh, the red line means the hot water go into the exchanger or heat sink here. So the heat sink will exchange the uh, the, the the air and then uh, the heat will dissipate into the room and the cold air will pump back to the uh, the heat 
element and then you recycle again. Okay, so this is how the uh, hot water heating system, again, this is a simplified version. I hope you get the idea. So since you are using metals and using water, so you have uh, you have metal, you have water, and you have water, you have hydrogen charge, you have oxygen charge, uh, sorry, not charge, you have oxygen uh, molecule, you have hydrogen, you have uh, uh, water, you have metal, then uh, you have you have set up the environment for corrosion. Uh, so what happened here? Uh, this is just an explanation of uh, uh, what happened when you have a heating system in a building. So normally water temperature will be around 80 to 90 degrees C uh, when they leave the boiler. And returning pipe will be 20 degrees C. So there's a drop of uh, about... 60 degree C and you learn about thermodynamics uh, so there are there are some equation to calculate how many heat uh, dissipated from the system right but we have learned about corrosion we are not uh, deal with the, the how many heat uh, dissipated but we focus on the uh, corrosion inside the system okay so what in what made us interested is the environment that contribute to the uh, corrosion temperature you know that when you elevate temperature corrosion also will happen faster with the fundamental element water metal uh, metal water hydrogen oxygen uh, then you can start to explain what happened using the p uh, the e ph diagram so for example, this one, this one is uh, uh, ion in the water at 25 degrees C. All right. And you can see uh, on the diagram here. So it gives you some, some notation there, lah, some notation there. So again, you have a line A and line B. Okay, let's go slowly. So this is the normal water pH, which is around 7. A little bit acidic, sometimes a little bit alkalic sometimes, but it still stay within the neutral range, which is here. All right, I highlight with the green region. And then let's look at what particular highlight area here. So along this region, you have uh, Fe region. Then you have a mixture of Fe charges and hydrogen evolution here, and then go up a little bit. You touch this boundary and go up again. You get the FeOH, this one, FeOH3, right? FeOH3 means this, this region, this, this region, this region here, you get FeOH3, which is you get the orange color. Uh, product, a corrosion product. Okay. Uh, then this one is FeOH2, which is green color product. This is a uh, ferric oxide. So if you keep your pH at the neutral region, for example, we just pick this, this region. Okay. Because we know that practically we cannot, uh, it's very hard to maintain uh, you want seven pH seven all the time. It's, it's very hard to. It's not practical and not economic. Uh, if you want, always want unless you're in the lab, right? But normal daily life is, is play around the this this. There's a range of uh, pH that you can go, right? Uh, right. So if you maintain within the neutral range, then you have a minimum corrosion damage, right? Minimum corrosion damage. Um, if you can control the potential, if the potential is very low, right? So this one, they give you one value, 0.65. So if you go to this diagram, so 0.65 is about here, okay, about here. 
minus sorry minus 0.65 is uh, 0.8 is about here somewhere here okay if you stay with this pH value and you go and uh, look at this voltage 0.65 is 0.4 0 0.8 yeah, about about this line. Okay, about this line. So below this line, uh, below this straight line, you will see that the the ion is quite stable. Okay. So there is a corrosion happen, but minimum. Okay. Okay. So from this statement, you know that uh, you look from the pH value and then you project up. Then you look for on this graph what happened uh, to this line, right? So because uh, above above this line, above this straight line, you see you are seeing the Fe two plus, uh, Fe two plus on that region. So below here you see there's no plus there, means it's a stable region. Okay, more stable, but it's still able to to trigger corrosion, but minimum. So another one is look at point B. Point B is uh, where your water contribute the oxygen, hydrogen charge and negative charge. Okay, this line. So uh, this is just an explanation. Um, yeah, this, this B is an oxygen reduction line uh, where you will see this uh, catholic oxygen reduction process will happen. Right? Point uh, line B. Okay. And this one is just mentioned about the oxygen level so oxygen level there have been a study um, if you are using a radiator a radiator is a mechanism if you study uh, automotive or uh, aircon uh, a thermodynamics uh, aircon heat exchange there's a mechanism called radiator so uh, so radiator is, is a mechanism or there's a devices to exchange heat so if you have a very high oxygen in the system in the radiator in the radiator, uh, radiator system the lifetime will reduce in a factor of 1.5 so you will you uh, maybe you don't need to memorize the number but it just you just highlight the effect of uh, corrosion what happened if you increase the oxygen level in the system okay uh, okay, so this one. Uh, so you know that oxygen contribute to corrosion. So the more oxygen, the more potential you have on this graph. Uh, so you, you see this line. So that's why you see this 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 line uh, is a slanted uh, line where it, it will go along with the pH value. The more alkali you, you have, the higher voltage you will get. Okay, the higher voltage you get. Meaning, if you have a higher voltage, meaning you are, you are getting more and more unstable. So, as, 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 so just now there is a region of localized pitting here and more severe Pitting here. So if you increase the, the 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 potential value, the more acidic, it means more serious the corrosion will happen. And this one is another statement for iron OH3. You see the three means uh, you see the orange color element. Uh, you will see uh, what happened if you have a, a loss of oxygen in the radiator uh, radiator. All right, so if you stay in this region, but 
your potential is very high, right? Your potential is very high. So if your potential more than zero volt, uh, I mean, if you extend from this, uh, you, you stay in this region, six to eight, uh, maybe six to eight, this region, and you know that this is a line. After this line, you increase the voltage, uh, increase the y-axis, you will enter into a region where FeOH3 will happen. Okay, so you increase more and more voltage, and, uh, not increase, la, but you, if you get more and more different voltage between the coro coro uh, uh, corrosion side, because on corrosion side, you know that you have positive and negative uh, po uh, uh, side. So the, 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 the more difference of uh, voltage between these two sides, uh, then you have a more uh, corrosion process or mechanism happen here. Okay. Again, uh, we are talking about corrosion. There's no external charge supply. Right? When, talk about, when talk about potential, means the, the differences of charges on the corrosion side. Okay. Uh, so sometimes in, in the old car, when you open up the radiator, you see some orange color. Uh, show, uh, orange color solution in the car radiator, or old car, la, right? A new car, normally you pour in the uh, uh, a solution, a chemical solution to, to protect the radiator from uh, getting the, the, the orange color uh, chemical compound, All right? So I'll just show you, maybe there's a photo there. I think I insert one photo, but before that, um, this is one one of the side side note lah. So um, if you have a hydrogen, if your hydrogen production, meaning normally where would this uh, hydrogen production will happen? It will happen at the acidic uh, site, which means if you want more hydrogen to, if you want to see more hydrogen in your system. You make it more acidic, lah. But normally, you do in in corrosion environment, you don't need to purposely go and make it acidic. It will become acidic. So become more and more acidic, man, means you will create more hydrogen in the system. Okay, again, corrosion uh, for metals in the uh, water environment, you have all the element that initiate the corrosion. Water. Uh, sorry, we start with the metal. Metal. Water, hydrogen, oxygen. Uh, so you, you you play around these four factor. Uh, another one is that um, where does this acidic uh, where where does this all pH value can drop? Sometimes it because of the uh, bacteria or uh, very very uh, not bacteria in this case. Uh, uh, bacteria is one of the the factor that contribute to the drop of pH, but Another one is here, uh, micro environment. What I mean by micro environment? Micro means small. If you have a very, very small space to do the heat exchange, uh, then the pH level, every time you measure, uh, for example, the, the space between the metal and metal for the heat transfer, if you have smaller space and a bigger space, at the smaller space, uh, when they do the heat transfer, the pH value would, would be lower than those have a big space. So micro environment also one of the environment setup that contribute to the low pH value. Okay, so that's why um, you see corrosion happen very quickly in, for example, car radiator, uh, old car radiator. Uh, you see all the metal in the radiator because radiator is is uh, the metal and metal they, they put very closely for uh, heat exchange at very far, high, uh, high rate. But because of that setup, uh, it will help or contribute to the corrosion uh, because of the factor of micro environment. Okay. Um, another one is that, yeah, what have what what can you see when 
you have the corrosion happen in the uh, radiator. Uh, you will see the chocolate color or orange color. Right. So this is, uh, I think I will. Okay. So later you will see lah. Okay. Uh, I, I will show you one diagram on the on the surface deposit. Uh. I think I have one. This is another diagram for 85 degrees. Just just to show you that actually there is a loss of uh, V versus pH diagram or potential versus pH diagram. Uh, uh, and when you read pH diagram, uh, E pH diagram, you have to be careful on the temperature because each temperature gives you different setting. So you cannot take uh, temperature at 20, uh, 25 degrees C cases uh, to analyze the cases at 85 degrees C. So you have to use the correct uh, graph. Huh? Another one, this one is the temperature versus uh, no, the oxygens, oxygen's level and uh, temperature. Uh, so if you increase the temperature, the oxygen um, content in the water will actually drop. Uh, okay, drop means oxygen so solubility means how good the oxygen can go into the water. Okay, so if you increase the temperature, the 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 level the oxygen activity can drop, uh, meaning the solubility of oxygen will drop. Uh, this is just a, a, a some data for you to visualize lah see um, again later we look into kinetic uh, dimension later on very specific very very specifically on the kinetic uh, consideration in the coming lecture you will have a lot of calculation later on okay uh, one of it is the oxygen content there will be one particular parameter that you need to put in to calculate the kinetic or uh, rate of corrosion later on uh, okay. Okay, this one later, when you come to calculation, then you will link the temperature and the catholic uh, reaction. Okay. Uh, I think we stop here. Next lecture, we'll talk about filiform corrosion. Okay. So just to recap what is important for today's uh, lecture, um, are you able to tell what happened if you increase the temperature uh, on the graph? I mean, based looking at the graph, are you able to tell uh, what will it uh, what will it contribute to the corrosion? Right. For example, this graph it tells you the solubility of oxygen. So if you oxygen solubility drop, what happened to the corrosion? All right and the pH diagram, uh, the V pH diagram, which side help more on the corrosion? All right. What happened if you have more alkalic uh, region? What happened to the protective layer? Uh, so these are all the fundamental. And then some technical one, for example, line A, line B, what is the chemical process? Okay. So this one you can look back at the PowerPoint slides. Uh. And uh, go and read the appendix D to have more more idea on the electrochemical reaction. Uh, okay, with this I end the recording.